What's up guys, it's Drak, and this says Adventure Force all over it, but if you look deeply enough into the DNA, this is in fact a Busby Blaster. Now we took a preview of this over at New York Toy Fair, uh, but we really want to put it through its paces, put it over a chronograph, get some real world data for you. So the Frantic Fury is featuring their new kind of funky inherently flip clip features, and then we've got an extendable shoulder stock, which I think I've commented before is not ideal, uh, as well as an aluminum scope say ooh ah it's not quite as good as the uh, the old school red dots though uh, which is a little unfortunate however the uh, the good news is to compensate for those lack of uh, features it does in fact only retail for 20 United States dollars so pound for plastic it's not a terrible deal and honestly I think that of the current offering this is going to be one of my personal favorites because of uh, its overall ergonomic profile. It reminds me of my favorite style of blaster, which is a uh, pump action uh, rifle type blaster. Although the grip is gonna be interesting. So let's bust it out of the cardboard and show you what we got. All right guys, so while we're loading up this magazine, I kinda wanna tell you there are a few things in the unboxing process that uh, stood out as notably cheap. First off, the glue quality on their darts has apparently gotten worse. Uh, you can see this is legitimately the glue that holds the tips onto the bodies of the darts. It's just literally like, I guess they're not going to break. Let's test that real quick. Okay, well, I mean, that's pretty good uh, in terms of your dart head kind of adhesion there. We've got lots of foam back there. So it's a, a pretty strong bond, but the, the issue is that they put so much on and then they didn't give them adequate enough time to cool that they're still sticking to one another which leads to yeah exactly like inconsistencies in a uh, chambering i'm sure that there's that much glue just hanging off of these guys and like in this case you have a full dot of the stuff sitting on the edge which would not be ideal for for getting into the barrel and it's it's not just one of them like it's all of them uh all of them have this extra glue so you almost have to go through and pick at them before you you load them up. So the, the 10 rounders are actually a good size. I've commented on this before. It's not going to be the focus of the video. This is very clever when it works. I think that they patented it too, which is very, uh, very intelligent, but this kind of snaps on and now you have inherently flippable magazines, which I think is cool. And when you don't want them, you just pop it off. Uh, this is meant to be a barrel attachment. I'm sure some people will think that that's tactical. Uh, I'll let the channels that are about to get obliterated by COPPA talk about all the different uh, little accessories and how awesome that is. Uh, we've always been pretty performance focused. So in the interest of giving you the best review we can, we're going to leave this off. I think that it's superfluous plastic. Um, over here we've got this guy. Uh, how do we turn it on? It's a button in the back. Although I guess it needs batteries because mine does not light up uh, out of the box. And then of course we have this extendable stock. The flaw with the stock being that it's uh, both short and flimsy. Now I like that they've got an expandable stock, but it almost has to be out because when it's in here, you will note I can't actually fit my ow, uh, hand into the grip. And just then when it kind of portioned away from me, it, it ate into my hand a little bit. So uh, that is, uh, is just bad design. It's not even like a design choice. It's just poor design. Now, this is one of uh, Busby's best grips in recent years. That's comfortable. It's got plenty of room. I actually like hand guards, so it's not all bad stuff. Like this is very flimsy. Uh, it moves a lot. It warps under any amount of strain either way and even without like any physical pressure. It's just, uh, uh, leave the stock off, leave the barrel off, maybe include batteries with this because this seems like it could be pretty decent. I like that it flips down and flips up, uh, but um, just take that plastic or that design time and put it into making things like better magazine releases and perhaps uh, a stock attachment point. Uh, it doesn't have to infringe on Nerf fat, and it could be anything, but the thing that I like about the Frantic is not its magwell. <laughs> um, yikes. Sorry, guys. Uh, but uh, it is the, the overall performance. So claiming range is of up to 100 feet. Did that really just... Okay, that's a little tight, but I guess it kind of has to be. The magwell should be further back. 
Ooh, and that was crunchy. How are we getting all these misfeeds? Like that, I suppose. Come on, Busby. Come on. Used to make great blasters. Let's put it over the chronograph. All right, guys, so we're outside. We're with the chronograph. It's too frantic, too furious. Let's see what the numbers say. So putting a few over, 73, duplicate 73, 75, 77, 54, 78, 57, 74, 76, duplicate 76, and that should be it. So I do just wanna point out with the uh, flip clip installed, every time I prime here, I'm kinda cutting into myself, so you have to be aware of that. You kinda have to prime like that, and then forward like that. Interesting that a dart just sorta floated out of there. Now we'll show you kinda how this guy works when the magwell is cooperating. There we are, back, forward, solid. Now we're gonna take some long range shots with the, uh, the flip clip uh, and uh, see, see how those perform. Again, I think that this is the most war practical aside from possibly the pistol. It's really gonna depend on your play style, but ow, dang. All right, well, cool gimmick. So ultimately, like no slam fire, obviously, but uh, a solid pump action Springer. That said, at 20 United States dollars, you can still pick up at Kohl's on sale Elite Alpha Troopers. And as I have been uh, known to say for a very, very long time, the Elite Alpha Trooper is like dollar for blaster, one of the best values. It was one of the best blasters of all time back when it came out in its in-strike version, and it came with the 18-round drum. Like, it's just a very versatile blaster, and this seems like it's trying to kind of attack that sort of angle, but with a weird like sort of toothed aesthetic here and here and a design that Yellow Jacket seemed to really dig, um, uh, with the possible exception of myself. Uh, this Yellow Jacket thinks that this could have used a few more design iterations uh, before being released out into the wild. So. Uh, frantic though it is, furious it is not. I, I think that this one's fine to pick up on sale. Like wait for it to drop down to like $10, $12. And then it's an okay pickup if for no other reason than the, uh, the darts and the, uh, the loner nature of the blaster is fine. But as a primary, I think that this is a unique case where you would be better served uh, buying name brand. Uh, just because the, uh, the pump action Springer market is just absolutely dominated by that, that EAT, it eats up the competition. So that's my, uh, that's my 10 cents, my two cents is free. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think of the Frantic Fury. Would you take this into a battle uh, in your backyard possibly? Much love, Nerf on, Drek out.